Alexa, pour me a bourbon. Sure, pouring bourbon now. A little over a year ago, I saw one of the most ridiculous viral pieces of content I've ever seen. It includes two of my favorite things, furniture and booze. If you're into furniture and you're into booze and you haven't seen the table that pours you a drink yet, you're probably living under a rock. And I finally got my hands on the mechanism that makes it all work. So let's build a table. So a little over a year ago, I saw this piece of content for the first time and I reached out to Daniel, whose account it was on, and we got to chatting. I think we're best friends now. And he was like, Duh. I'll make one that is way better and I'll send it to you when we're done. And I said, Duh. I'd love that. And then I'll tell all these people about it so they can buy them and you can make tons of money because this is awesome. And he was like, awesome. Now it's 2024 and it's here. Now, just because all the mechanical parts are figured out, I think, doesn't mean that this build is gonna be easy at all. We've got to figure out how to hide the mechanism in a table, how to hide the top part because I don't want it to show. I want it to be completely invisible and I don't want anyone to know that my table can secretly pour me a drink. We're going to take this thing completely over the top, which means we're going to have to get creative, but none of that can start until we open this thing up and see what it actually looks like and how big it actually is. So Chris, and here she is. I believe he's calling it the Servito. Servita. Let's crack this thing open. I can't believe how small he got it because when you originally looked at it, that thing was like the size of like an original 3D printer, like the original 3D printer. It was huge. It almost looks Look like at a this. PC tower. PC tower vibes for sure. That's probably dating us because now those are cool. But back when we were young, it wasn't cool to see all the stuff inside a PC. So our thoughts here is like we want to design this to hide this uh, mechanism. Even though it looks awesome, I think it'd be really cool if this was like hidden in plain sight. So I gotta bring Chris into this build because I can't read or use anything electronic without hurting myself. His forte, he talks to robots more than humans. So don't get offended if he hasn't replied to your DM. Yeah, it's clean. I mean, real clean. That's some real R&D right there. Not that knucklehead bullshit that we did. We'll be able to, I think, at least do one, maybe two drinks. I know originally he was like, you can make a mixed drink to be like, make me a cranberry vodka. I know I saw a video on that. It's also compatible with our friend Alexa. First thought, Chris and I were talking a little bit and we want to make this thing like as hidden as possible. We're gonna have to get creative because it's round. We'll do an end table just like Daniel did in his video. But instead of just having a hole, we wanna kind of do a decorative pattern on the front somehow. Something that like is multiple colored woods, it has like a, an intricate like visual appeal to it. Sacred geometry. That way when it goes up and down, the hole we can hide it in the back. So then it comes, it goes down and like it looks just like it's supposed to be part of the top. We'll have like a false wall and then we can have the bottles of booze that it plugs into also behind it. They make a like invisible glass or that privacy glass that is like electrically charged that turns you know, transparent or clear. So we'll have that piece slide in here with a solid bottom shelf. I think what we need to do next is hop on the computer, figure out what pattern we're gonna do on the top, and then also come up with some sort of a, a base design that's a little more usable than my chicken scratch here on the board. Ready, break. So here's what we came up with. Looks like a little bit more of an eclectic end table, but right here inside is gonna be a piece of, it's either a two-way mirror or a piece of glass that electricity will show. We're gonna try the like invisible thing, see if that works. And then we've got the cool top here. So see on the top of the model, we're gonna go with like these circular forms here, which I think will be really neat and also allow us to have a circle that we're gonna mark with a piece of brass inlay that will be where we go up and down. And then that will actually be all made and cut on the laser with different wood species. We're gonna line the interior with maple and then we'll do veneered walnut all around the outside and just kind of create a simple more or less mitered box most of the complexity is going to come into that top might need to get into a little bit of epoxy work i don't know in order to build it the first thing i need to do is break down some walnut i think and get into veneering all of these sides i think this is going to be more veneer work than i've ever done on a single project so this could get interesting let's go break down some wood chris's favorite wood we actually have a little bit of paduk left over from the workbench and this is going to have a very similar wood species usage except majority will be walnut instead of maple like it was on the workbench so chris can already get started on these cutting them down to size, burning out the parts on the laser that are gonna go with the little red parts that we saw in the rendering. And then what I'm gonna do is get this piece of maple flattened and then glued up into like a panel more or less so we can cut all of the maple parts in one piece. All right, so with everything pre-cut here, 
I've got all of like the veneers laid out and I'm more or less just gonna start selecting like what I want to go where. I think this is what I'm gonna go with. Those will be both facing the front edge of the table. And then this piece here will be my bottom. So what I'll do now is get these all jointed up and get them nice and tight and perfect. We are ready to glue these panels up. To do the top with all the parts and pieces we wanted, we can't do it out of solid wood because when it expands and contracts, it'll just explode apart. So we have to do it out of a solid substrate, which then means the rest of the box should be built out of a solid substrate, at least in my opinion, so that everything doesn't move and blow apart once we get this thing together. So we're gonna get this thing glued up and then into the vacuum bag to hang out overnight. I can't do a ton more, but one thing I can do is prep material for the top. I've got some walnut here. I really like the, the straight grain in this two parts here. And then I've got another piece that also has some straight grain. The colors are pretty close. And so I'm gonna cut the parts for our top. That'll be a mitered picture frame. And then the rest of this will get used for edge banding the fronts of all the pieces that are in glue up in the bag right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these ripped and then we'll do the miters here on the table saw. Sam and I have got everything kind of ready to rock and roll. These are looking great. Sam's got another panel glued up and ready to rock and roll for the back. But before that goes in the bag, we need to finish the really cool top thing. I don't even want we mosaic. We're going with mosaic. So I just popped the clamps out. Look at that, you shut up. Perfectly flat, beautiful panel here. I'm just gonna kiss it on the wide belt and then Chris is gonna be able to burn the maple grid for all of our parts. Then we're gonna laminate this to another substrate. We're off to a good start, especially today. We got the Thunder Laser all cleaned up. Chris is gonna go ahead and place the panel and do all this stuff there, but look at how clean all of these Paduke parts are coming out. These things are looking sweet. Chris went ahead and printed a little like sample to make sure all of our pieces fit. And this thing is looking so good. All the grain orientation on the footballs will be straight. We're gonna pick left to right potentially or up front and back walnut. But this part here is what we're gonna be cutting right now in the maple. So I'm stoked. It's gonna look so good. These sat overnight and they're looking good. I think this is a vinyl bag and mine's something different. I think I mentioned that yesterday. These panels look great. So we got to edge band fronts and the backs. And so I'm just trying to make sure the front has a nice piece of matching color and grain. I think that'll be pretty good. I want our front and back of the, of the cabinet box to look mitered. I want those face frames to be mitered. And so if we were to do it a different way, I would probably have to build a face frame and it would be a lot thicker. So I think we're gonna be able to get away with it like this. I don't know. We'll find out when we come to assembly because that could be terrible. But in my head right now, it's. It's going good. Dude, this came out so awesome. Ooh, sick. That's clean. Heck yeah. Do we have the walnut done yet? We don't have the walnut, we have the puke. All right, let's get to it. So this is gonna be a bit sacrilege, but the only half inch material we have that's in a decent plywood is this walnut plywood. This grid looks so good. Chris and I are children, so we have to mock it up. There's like 70 some parts. <laughs> we're gonna put them all in, 130 parts, and then we're gonna look at them. Part of me wants to use epoxy for this, but I don't know what the right call is. So I'm gonna use wood glue. I think that's the adult thing to do. First with the maple down, and then I'll go everything else. I'll try to like brush the inside of the maple so we get some good glue adhesion, fill the gaps. That took a little bit longer than we thought. We're starting to get some curl out of the, the wood. When wood gets that thin and you're doing like these little pieces, and you add moisture to one side, it's immediately gonna suck it up and start curling, and that's kind of what's happening. So we wanna get this thing in here ASAP. Once this thing gets out of here, I'm going to epoxy flood coat the, oop. This doesn't need to be that whole size anyway. That's why you don't leave an overhang like that, Sam. Alrighty, it is the next day. Everything should be dry. Everything. Here, Chris loves this sound. <laughs> we want to flatten this thing out and then uh, we're going to get a game plan together for how we're going to do this emblem in brass, I think is the goal over here for this part, because this will be the specialty one that the drink will, will drop down with. So let's go run this through the wide belt real quick. Looking pretty rad. So you see some of these gaps that showed up. I don't have a good solution for making them look good. And so I think instead of trying to hide them, I will accentuate is the word. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this on the CNC 
and we're gonna do a very shallow, like 16th to an eighth of an inch, 60 degree carving path on all of the outside edges of the maple here. It'll outline everything to the same depth, and then we're gonna fill that with a, a brass tinted resin or like a gold resin. And then we'll also fill this pocket here, which will do the exact same thing that we were trying to do with just having the brass insert. And I think it'll look awesome. So Chris needs to get to writing that tool pad. And while he does that, I'm gonna prep the panels to build the carcass. Before we get any further on this project, I have to send a huge thank you out to Thunder Laser for sponsoring this build. Whether you're living under a rock or you just don't watch any of my other content, you've probably been seeing this laser for months and we're loving it. It is so much faster than a CNC with so much versatility, I cannot even begin to explain to you guys. This thing was so easy to bring in. We dropped it in place, went through a little bit of installation and we were rocking and rolling. If you're looking to start a woodworking business or you're looking to make very precise size small parts or even big parts this thing is a game changer learning how to use it has been a breeze for my team and i promise you you will find more and more ways to use this we are using it on every single project we do for templates for layout for anything that we can possibly think of because it is so fast and so easy to use. So thank you Thunder Laser for sponsoring this build. Thunder has all kinds of sizes. Check them out in the link down below. You can get into a big machine like this all the way down to some smaller machines. They are awesome and I've been loving this thing. Thank you Thunder. All right, so we're making lemonade here. Grooves are cut and we've got a bunch of gold epoxy out. I really wanted to do brass, but because we're gonna fill in these parts, I don't think that's the case. I could have bought brass dust, but that would have taken forethought, which we definitely don't do around here. I'm gonna use this pure gold pigment. Hope I have enough. Hope we don't it up beyond belief. But before we do any of that, we've got to cut this circle out here and we can only use the laser because we need the tiniest of curves. And so if we miss, the whole thing gets scrapped and we've got to start over. All the pressure's on you now, Chris. Well, moment of truth. How good are we? Ah. Super close. The bench. I see you, bitch. Yes. Sweet. Pretty damn clean. For the all intents and purposes of what we're trying to do, absolutely nailed it. Okay, so to get the epoxy to work, we're gonna make a ring that's a quarter inch overall dimension, uh, whatever this. Um, diameter. Diameter is. That'll give us like an eighth inch ring and then I'll be able to come back and flush trim it, finagle it more or less, to make this nice and tight. Then that'll be the ring that goes on this part here, and I'll dam this on the inside of this while we pour the rest of the top, so looking good. I'm gonna touch this up by hand. I know I said I was gonna pour epoxy. Bear with me. We're gonna build the top frame first, that way I can create a reveal on the dado that the whole top will sit inside. That'll match the epoxy. It'll make sense here in a moment. So I'm gonna cut these relief joints and cut my dados out here. After that, I'll drop my panel in, I think. Let's see if I can math. And I actually listened to you, cut it heavy so we could get that reveal. That will give us a nice epoxy line around the outside after I get that glued up. <laughs> so I'm going to glue this frame up and you're probably asking yourself at home because you're an avid woodworker, obviously yourself. And you're saying, John, what do you mean you need to reinforce it? Well, end grain to end grain, is obviously a weak joint, and I'm aware of that. So we need to figure out a way to make it stronger and also aesthetically pleasing. I can't add a domino, I could, but I don't wanna add a domino because we're gonna be mitering these, I think at the moment, in the design. So the front box looks like a mitered box and all of the edges are, are nice and perfect. We will see if I stick with that as we continue on this journey of me making shit up and putting it on the internet as I go. I'm gonna put a zero clearance adapter fence on this. And then we're gonna create our 45 without having to cut these anymore size-wise on the table saw. Pretty nifty trick. We're gonna put the box together and then I'm gonna pour the epoxy. I don't believe you. Now, ladies and gents, this is a box. <laughs> it's a walnut box with multiple miters on it. I always forget how hard it's actually not hard, but like how much more complex it is to do things that look simple. Like I said, we're gonna mount this in here and I'm gonna use some screws. So I've got some marks here on the miter. I'm just gonna go through. Looks pretty darn good there. For reinforcement to support these miters. 
I might run a couple biscuits for alignment's sake, but if you see here, this gap doesn't let me get my Domino's face on it, which becomes an issue for alignment. The biscuits are mostly alignment. They'll add a little bit of strength and we'll add more strength once we come back and reinforce these with a dowel or a screw or maybe a Drew, which is a dowel screw. I just made that up. Someone on here, Drew Builds. That's a huge channel now. Start calling your uh, dowel screws Drews. There's no way he watches my stuff. Biggest old guy complaining in his shop. I don't even know what I'm complaining. What am I complaining about, Chris? The weather. Pour that epoxy while this is chilling. Okay, it's happening. All right, we've decided to go with pure gold, black diamond pigments. And so I'm just going to use this Total Boat High Performance and wing the volume by the eye. And we're gonna use all of it. Better to use it all than not to use enough is my thought. And I really hope we have enough. <laughs> That's a hot mess. I hate it. Okay, let's go ruin this one now. The next day. All right, it is dry, I think. Looking good. We have no epoxy seeped down. We've got some bubbles. Now, the only bad part about this method that I chose, I have to hand sand this to flush without creating divot. Or should we try to get the puck out first? Cause that, could be catastrophic and ruin my entire day. And it's almost 10 a.m. Means there's a lot of day to ruin. But yeah, let's do that first. Hey! Not terrible so far, could be worse. At least at this point I know I can uh, just run it straight through some sort of flattening machine. I refuse to be told I can't do something. Yeah! Get the split for camera. Go! I am all that is man. I am all that is man. I'm gonna um, stick it down to something flat and then we're gonna go run it through the wide belt. Woo! Worst case, it throws this around the inside of the machine and gets sucked up and we lose it forever. Let's go! Still there. Come on! sat in there for a while. <laughs> she did, but but it did what we wanted. Before I do anything else with the cup, the puck, the puck, I wanna get this sanded down to make sure all of our openings and stuff are good. The Rotex should do quick work of this, in theory. So I need to somehow get these to line up perfectly so I have a perfect reveal on the outside. When I was trying to think about this before, I thought it would be easier when my dumbass beveled the one side. And so because I beveled it, I can't find center from the bottom. Oh, are you admiring my miniature router table that we're using again? Yeah, this thing rolls. Grab a plan, build yourself one, join me in being awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get close to this on here so we're not removing a ton of material. This is as close as we're gonna get, trying to leave a little bit of a golden ring on this sucker. I think with some persuasion, it'll get the point across. It's not perfect. I guess if we redid it, Chris, we'd have to do a, a little bit bigger. Like we just thought we could cut the middle of the kerf. We should have taken the kerf off of this puck and done it without it. We should have just tried something else. We should have just not been us. <laughs> you know what? I mean, it looks good. You were right. It looks pretty good. I think with some little, little bit of touch up on the insides here, we'll get that thing to come down and sit nicely. All right, we got a bunch of little holes that I need to fill now and then sand this thing to finish. Get it ready for finish because we're gonna pre-finish before we can finish it. And I'm gonna have that translated into finish. I almost forgot, we've gotta insert the back panel. I was originally gonna rabbit it in the back, which I could still do, which will give us a completely flush back, which I kind of prefer because it'll be, set, or I could cleat it. I think I'm just gonna go with the rabbit. We're already in it. I've got it set up. You got a rabbiting bit, the ball bearing, it'll cut a little groove here, and then the, the, it'll sit right like this. I did this on my uh, end table that I made, and it worked well. rush everything on a Friday. Every thing we do. I hate Fridays. I'm just trying to get shit done and I go ahead and it up. We're perfect top to bottom, left and right. I fucking missed. Good thing I know how to fix shit, but it makes me so fucking mad. All right, I'm going to glue some fucking pieces on the edge here and then we're going to do some important shit. Any of you guys are ever wondering, making YouTube videos isn't all Glitz and glamour. I even wrote it down. I just literally read the tape measure upside down, backwards, and wrong. 
We need to make this drink riser work now. I don't know, Chris, you read the instructions, right? Yeah. All right, so what do we gotta do? Uh, install it in place. Okay. Plug it in, put the button on, push the button, I think for like two seconds, and then it like registers. And then there really wasn't like a whole lot to it. It was pretty simple. Really? You sure about that? So the intent here is that we'll get this thing installed and then it's got these little juice dispensers here on the back. It'll suspend from the back of the cabinet and then we can go ahead and install our hidden feature and fun stuff. So we gotta add buttons. Screw Savant. Savant of screw. I have to say this LTT screwdriver pretty good. It does have some good weight to it. Linus did a great job. It's awesome that you supported Linus in purchasing those. And if you wanna support us, you could purchase a pair of shop shades. We just launched these uh, a little bit ago. We've sold a couple thousand already and I am absolutely blown away by the support you guys have given us. We are only running the pre-sale through February. So if you wanna save a couple bucks before we get our first shipment ever in, grab yourself a pair. They're ANSI Z87 Plus certified. They're gorgeous. The most comfortable set of glasses I've ever worn. They are. I literally forget they're on my face all the time. John will walk in the office and I'm sitting at the computer still wearing. Yes, they're crystal clear. We've got a little bit of blue light, anti-fog features. They're amazing. I got a link in the description if you're interested and you wanna support the team us building crazy shit like this and all that we do this will be the best way to do it. Grab yourself a pair of shop shades, stay protected, look awesome, and be great. All right, so we gotta get some power to this thing and then try and raise it up and down. So does he have two connectors in there? Yeah. Are you sure the second's not up and down? So it's for two different drinks. So he gave us the expansion model so we can mm. have it do like mixed drinks or like two different drinks or... Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Jack and Diet Coke. Exactly. <laughs> or one type of bourbon and another type of bourbon. I'm like a kid right now. I'm so antsy to get it done. We're like so close. As a furniture builder, like it's done. I can't build anything else. Except the damn back panel. The back panel's gonna haunt me. Yeah, I'm gonna get... Instead of just screwing it in, I'm gonna go ahead and install these so we can make sure that we're not damaging this thing because we're gonna have to take this whole, all this out to finish. Another big shout out to Daniel that sent us this. <coughs> Pretty incredible that they did this all on their own. Yeah, Chris is a nerd and there's nothing wrong being a nerd. All that stuff is hard. Dude, Daniel literally just made this thing up and like took it to market. God bless America. Alrighty, Chris has got this sucker working. Now we have a point to start with. So the Daniel, the creator of this is working out all the bugs still. He sent us more or less, this is like a, be a final stage prototype, I think. And um, it works. But we were just on the phone with him for the past 30 minutes working out a few kinks. But I do think he's gonna have these available for the public here very, very soon. And when they do, we'll link it. So it's not designed to be used the way we did it. Comes with this cup and this here designates where it's gonna sit and like it gives you the opportunity to put something like nice and pretty on top, but not like absolutely conceal it. So we do have to do some configuration in here. More or less though, this is the gist of like how things are gonna look. That is the idea in a nutshell. So you see it and then you'd be like, oh, I want a drink and then. And see how it hits right here? So I'm gonna take that thing off and then we're gonna do math. So a couple spacer blocks have been cut. Now we can drop them in underneath and put these in place with this at full height. We'll be able to fasten it down and also move this back enough that the puck won't hit because we need the puck to ride like pretty tight over here to be honest. See, there's like a little groove. We need this to freely go up and down without hitting this lip right here. Probably gonna have to get like super close on this edge. It should clear. A rudimentary box. So I think if we put it here, we, we should be good. So we had to put another spacer in here. <laughs> what ended up happening was when that was fully seated, our piece inside ended up being a half inch away. We just accounted for the puck when we didn't need to account for the puck. Yeah, I just, you know, listened to Chris. Oh, you didn't catch it either. I did not catch it now. Now we just have to have a riser here. The only concern at this point for this thing is gonna be balance. Would you look at that? We're still low. Yeah. We wanted it to be low, but not this low. <laughs> I'm gonna go down for the first time. Go, 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 go down. Yeah! <laughs> Stop! Go back up for the first time! Going back up for the first time. Keep going. Hell yeah, more beer. Okay, cool. I mean, well, it does the thing. It works. He needs to beef up those motors. Okay, friends. We are doing some crazy stuff here. I'm going to now glue these shims on top of our puck shim. Because we're idiots. 
but also took a little bit of finagling. There's a little bit of play in the component that goes up and down. The only thing we can do is like try and fix it. So you can see here, I sanded this bottom to make it like the puck sits at an angle so that this corner has more thickness to it than this side. It's, it's very slight, but we were finding that when we had it sitting in here, that it wasn't working. Now it sits as damn close to flush as we think we're gonna be able to get. That's exactly how it's gonna go. This should be a strong enough bond long-term for what we're looking to do. And then I also am like, well, if we break it, and it stops working, we can pop this this off. And there, my friends, is our girl. I guess now, we gotta put a rocks glass on there and test it. Sam bought me this for Christmas. It's the only appropriate glass to use in this situation. Usually I take it neat, but I will make an exception in the name of health. Yeah! <laughs> that rules! <laughs> Let's go! All right, Chris is my tech guy and he's failing me miserably. Oh, he has no God. idea how to use the app. I did app. not design this app. It doesn't, no know. one said you had to design it. He has no idea how the controls work, so we're just gonna send it on make drink one with it in a cup of water. The things that could happen. One, it sprays water all over the inside of this beautiful cabinet that I was very meticulous and trying not to ruin. Two, pull a bunch of air into the lines and it breaks the pump mechanism because we didn't prime it or prep it or anything because there's no instructions to do so. Or three, it works fine. And then we button this thing up and send it with the bourbon. What could go wrong? How's it gonna know when it's primed? I don't, I don't know. You're asking a question somebody who didn't design an app or the thing, so. If it's just gonna pull, how's it know how long the hose is? It doesn't, it doesn't. You just keep hitting drink one until it's primed and then go? I'm worried. That's as low as it goes? As low as it goes. Oh so boy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not 100% gonna miss. I mean, I'm at least cheating it for the first pour. Okay, we're filling up. Keep going. Are you pumping? Hey! Whoa! Whoa! It's not gonna miss. It shot all the way over to here. That thing had a lot more balls than I was expecting. Don't fail me, Ron. Come on. Don't make a mess. You can do it, little one. You can do it, little girl. <laughs> Heavy, oh, it's going to drip. It drips a little. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We need to put like a little 3D print something to like catch yeah. drippings. But that was awesome. <laughs> yes. Woo. <laughs> let's get drunk. Absolutely wonderful. Yes. All right. Let's finish her up. No one said yes to let's get drunk. Damn it. All right. Here you say let's get drunk. Let's get drunk! Life isn't about getting drunk and eating chicken fingers all the time, all right? Now we're gonna pull the guts out and I'm gonna add the last element, which I think is gonna make this thing perfect. So back panel's dry after my colossal mishap with the reading stuff. So I'm just gonna tighten that up, get that fit with some magnets real quick. Then we're gonna go ahead and insert the mirrored panel. And while doing that, Chris is gonna be working on getting uh, the secret sauce set up for the pour. Something so we can integrate with a voice command, which should be pretty rad. It's just not that powerful magnets. Okay, for the glass, I've got these trim pieces cut. They're actually the cutoffs from our rabbit on the top. And they worked out to be the perfect size, which is always a happy accident when that happens. So I'm going to, let's just nail them in on three sides here, leaving it open on the top. <laughs> Shop shades look real good in that mirror though. It'll look just as good on your face, just saying. Holy shit. See how it becomes completely invisible? Whoa. It's neat. <laughs> you should see his face behind the camera. It's cool. We're cleaned up. I recessed some washers into here. I'm gonna do some sanding still. And then we put some bigger magnets in. So this should now stay in place doesn't pop off. Get these sanded up, touched up a little bit, looking a, a, just a little bit cleaner. Um, we gotta poke a hole in here for some wires. Everything else is pretty much ready to rock and roll. We're gonna finish this thing with some Rubio for multitude of reasons. One, it's fast. Two, I love it. Three, it looks great. Four, it's fast. Speed's what we need. Yeah, so that'll be the, um, the finish going on and then we're gonna be ready to actually ask this thing to pour me a drink. I am stoked. 
So we've got this little button here, and this is for when we run out of Alexa. I'm gonna recess it into the side here. This is a pretty bold move because I could just put it on the back. I wanna have it on the side. That way when I pull the back panel off to change the booze, I don't have any issues. But we, I do think we should have it in here in case we don't have internet access or something. I happen to be drinking this on a remote island with just a battery pack. I don't know. Chris is gonna cut a perfect one inch circle that matches the grain right here. Before I cut any holes, the thought is I'll do a recess of one inch so that that button fits. And then I can come the whole way through with uh, this auger bit here from Wood Owl. Then this piece will drop in. After that, we should have enough room for it to go through. It's getting me pucker now the more I talk about it. <laughs> but I think it would be pretty cool. If not, I can just put the button on the back here. By cutting the hole right here, that will almost blend perfectly with it. It'll be a slight reveal, but it'll be super, super hidden. I think, that, yeah, I'm puckered. This is probably the most puckered I've been on the whole project. Literally blasting a hole through the side of my beautiful freaking cabinet. Okay, let's go. That's what I want to see. So I don't even need to do anything on the inside. And then I will sand that flush after it's attached. Perfect. Look at that green match. Sick. Okay, now for the magic trick. I mean, I couldn't do much better than that. <laughs> what do you think, Pola? Hidden button? Look at that smile. You never smile. It, well, that's, that's a fine piece of woodwork in there. And it's, Someone said you look like Justin from Dodgeball in the comments. I, I saw that. I've been that from people for years, though, so. <laughs> this thing rolls. This is so cool. It's fried. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bitter end. So the LED pin on the board is 12 volt. Um, I didn't realize that the Govi LEDs that we had were 24 volt. It just drew way too many amps, uh, too much current through those pins and fried the board, so yay. Don't feel bad, Chris. There's only two types of people in this world. The type of person that fries a motherboard and a mechanism to lift up a drink, and the person that hasn't done it yet. Didn't we say we'd wait till tomorrow? No, you said pull the LEDs that we had. Now, I mean, it's my fault. I'm not saying it's. Well, no, I said I tomorrow. said wait till tomorrow. I said that's fine. You said yeah. The LEDs that we're you said oh, you said good. I'll get my shit that I have. No, you said go ahead, plug in the ones as long as they're easily replaceable. You don't remember that conversation? Oh. You said then we would just swap them out tomorrow. That was the conversation we had. 100% my fault. I should. Have been. All right. So now we don't have the entire mechanism that makes this work. So we basically just have a, a <laughs> box with a hole in it. Yeah, but he's gonna drive it up tomorrow. From where? Ohio. Ohio! I don't know, but he says it's not that bad of a drive, so he's gonna drive it over tomorrow. So Daniel's gonna be in the video. I mean, I'm not saying that I did something pretty cool, but. Oh, go get me the puck. You're in, you're in timeout. It sucks because I had the other LEDs working fucking perfect. Can I have my puck? Because, you know, the part I'm doing is awesome. <laughs> I'm just gonna. <laughs> We're not normal. So in the final stages, Chris fried the motherboard putting two bright of LEDs on. So Daniel, the inventor, actually showed up to fix it. He's like, now I'm on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. After no less than an entire day in finding out that the wires were simply backwards, these two had figured it out. So let me show you how this thing works. Alexa, pour me a bourbon. Sure, pouring bourbon. Now. <laughs> yes! It's working. And just like that, a perfect one ounce pour. Cheers. Alexa, pour me a bourbon. Sure, pouring bourbon. Now. So obviously this thing is super rad, a lot of nuance, and it's looking amazing. Now don't forget, we also have the ability to pour it without using any voice commands, just by pressing this button. <laughs> this is so awesome. It's 
so awesome. I can't explain how much I love that. That is so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just, I can't stop smiling. It's just so cool. So let me show you guys the inside. The way it works, we've got this panel on the back. You guys watch me make, it's magnetized, it sticks in here. And then the motor itself is mounted to the top on this platen here that we built custom. We put a little drip tray in here because it does get a little bit dirty. Something we just 3D printed that we can take in and out and clean and put back in real quick. Everything's finished and we also have LEDs with diffusers on it. The way it works, and this thing can actually hold two drinks and you can get uh, a mixed drink going or two different bourbons or two different liquors or whatever you want in there. But we simply just take a bottle of our choosing, you stick the tube in it and there she goes. That's all it is. You prime it using an app that comes with the Servita, and then you're ready to rock and roll. Like most things that we build around here, making it look simple makes it so much more complex. I think this thing turned out gorgeous. One of our best projects to date, easily my favorite project of the year. It's only the second project, but <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm hoping my wife will allow me to put this in the house. All in all, awesome project. Thank you, Daniel, for supplying the Servita bartender. Super cool. If you guys wanna grab one yourselves, I do believe you just launched them on Kickstarter. I'll have that link down below. And then let me know, what are we gonna build next?